Welcome back. We turn now to Republican challenger in the race for Salt Lake County Mayor Trent Staggs. He's here to talk about why he thinks there needs to be a change in county leadership. Trent, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me, Glenn. You bet. Let's start off with background. Tell us a little bit about what you have done, your life experience, and what you feel qualifies you to, to uh, be the next Salt Lake County Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. I, I grew up here in the southwest part of the county. Uh, I spent the entirety of my adult life here in the county, uh, attending high school, Bingham High School, then went on to the uh, University of Utah for my undergraduate degree, focusing studies in political science and economics, and then got my master's in business administration from Brigham Young University. And for the last 25 years or so of my professional career, I've been involved in uh, largely three industries, finance, uh, working at Morgan Stanley, and then also uh, owning a nationwide mortgage brokerage company other businesses and now work as an advisor and a board member on a publicly traded company. And I think that business background is something that's really key and informs a lot of my decision making as it relates to uh, municipal government. And you've been serving as the mayor of Riverton the last two years. Why do you want to take the step to Salt Lake County? Yeah, I d got involved in politics about seven years ago. I served four years or a term on the city council in Riverton and then was elected mayor in 2017. And really, it was my interaction as mayor with the county that uh, led me to see many issues with the county. We have now, as a city, we've left three county-led uh, organizations or services. And at every turn, we've actually ended up saving our residents millions of dollars, uh, improved the level of service, and also improved the accountability and transparency. So one of those would be uh, unified police. What are the others? That's right. There was a taxing district for uh, the county uh, that was the means to pay for Unified Police Department. By exiting that, uh, our residents now save about $1.3 million a year in property tax. And the Unified Police System, led by the county, we self-provided as of a year ago, July. We got nine more officers for the same amount that we were contracted to pay through Unified. And the animal control services, uh, we've saved hundreds of thousands of dollars by engaging in more of a public-private partnership with a local vet clinic. And so seeing uh, these experiences, it led me to look more at the budget of the county. And I saw that that budget has increased $500 million or 50% in the last five years. We now have, Glenn, a larger budget in Salt Lake County than Clark County, Nevada, that has twice as many people, twice as many residents to serve. And of course, my opponent has proposed a $16 million tax increase on everybody this year and has said she would like to index property tax to inflation so they'd automatically increase every year. I think that's a terrible idea. We'll get more into taxes in just a bit, but I wanna get into some of the other big issues of the day, dominating sure. obviously the COVID-19 pandemic. I wanna get your thoughts on how you would have handled that. Let's go back to the very beginning. Yeah. What steps would you have taken when that the pandemic first started hitting here in the state of Utah? Well. I I actually wrote an opinion piece uh, on this back in March when it first did hit really the state of Utah. And I think that the, the effort with respect to testing has been very poor and was critical of that effort. I, I think if we want to really get a handle on this pandemic, we need to pay attention to other countries, uh, other areas that have exhibited what I think are best practices like South Korea and elsewhere, where they have been able uh, through robust and expanded testing efforts, really put a lid on it. And unfortunately, we've not done that. I think we have a great life science and bio community here that uh, has really inexpensive testing uh, that, that we could have implemented for both symptomatic, asymptomatic people, and would have used my leadership effort at the county to do that. Uh, use CARES Act funding much more quickly and efficiently than what's been used. Would you have enacted a shutdown? No. Um, I, think, I think that we can protect both lives and livelihoods. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Um, look, back then, nobody really knew. You know, none of us in elected, as elected officials went to a pandemic 101 school, so I understand uh, what had happened, and that was largely uh, the response of both the federal and the state governments, so those shutdowns occurred. Uh, but I, I think I was a proponent of moving quickly to reopen the economy in a safe way um, through using best practices that we have here today. My opponent was actually 
uh, championing keeping the economy shut down, she said, through at least May 30th and possibly the 4th of July. So you would have never gone with an economic shutdown in the very beginning. Is that correct? Well, the, the economic shutdown was really imposed by uh, the federal and state, uh, state agencies. I, I think the county, what they could do more effectively is to focus our efforts on testing the resources that we've received. But from in the Salt Lake County, they did take it further than what we saw in other counties. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the efforts to stay in certain statuses um, for longer than may, what may have been needed, uh, you saw that the, the county really opened back up in May, and I think that was largely in part due from pressures mm -hmm. by the governor and residents. Do you stand by a mask control. mandate? Would you enact that? Hey, look, I think masks are great. Um, I think that they really do protect the public health and can get the economy going again. They're a common sense measure. Uh, I think, however, even if 100% of individuals uh, complied and used masks, we're still unfortunately going to see case counts rise and people uh, be affected. We're seeing that right now. So yes or no, mask we're, mandate? We're, we're seeing that right now with a mask mandate. What I wanna do, Glenn, is put my focus on testing. I think masks are great, but the analogy I've used is like wearing rain boots in a home that's taking on water. We need to go after the source, and that source is really uh, those that are carrying. Okay, the so virus. you think people should wear masks, but you would not you would not impose a mandate. Yeah, is I, that what I'm hearing? I, I would have worked much more collaboratively, I think, with city mayors and um, other key influencers to ensure that we put out the importance of wearing masks. Okay, we need to I get on to another very important topic, real quick quick, that is Olympia Hills. Sure. I think that's what I saw kind of catapult you into this race. You took a very uh, strong stance against that. Talk about why. Yeah. Well, I, I, there's just poor plan. It's a, it's, it's a poor planned project, poorly planned. I, you have 900 acres approximately. They wanted to put about 10,000 housing units up against Butterfield Canyon. It's effectively uh, putting that much density at the end of a cul-de-sac. And uh, I think I'm, I'm for smart development, but we need to have infrastructure that is there. Let's and that's talk a little bit more about that. What is high density an answer though to the crisis we're facing with housing? You and I both have children who may not be able to afford to live here down the road. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think there is room for density. We do have housing, a housing gap problem and an affordability problem. And I have a plan for that on my website. And I think to a large extent, we should be focused in areas that are along major transportation and transit corridors for that density, not out at the furthest most edges of the county that's only going to exacerbate congestion, uh, air pollution, you name it. I Is think. there anywhere in the county that you see as a suitable location for a project like Olympia Hills? Well, we have the point of the mountain right now, mm -hmm. and that 700 acre plus project is almost equal in size and getting a lot of attention these days. It's close to major transportation transit corridors. And so the county mayor has a seat at the point of the Mountain Commission and also the Inland Port. You've got projects like that. There's a lot of other county property, however, that uh, is along major transportation and transit corridors that I think is underutilized. And we haven't done an audit yet. We need to do that and see if we can't work with private development to improve the housing stock that we have and, and make a dent in the affordability. Okay, we have about a minute left. Uh, talk to me about some of the endorsements you're getting. Well, it's been really great, the number of endorsements that we've been able to receive. Uh, having served on a city council and as a mayor now, I reached out to almost every elected official in the county and made an effort. And we have received scores of endorsements uh, from mayors, from city council members, from the business community. I think we have about seven city mayors and scores of city council members all throughout the valley and uh, to receive endorsements from uh, other great officials statewide uh, such as Senator Romney and others is I think um, it really speaks to the campaign and, and the okay. need people see for reform at the county. You mentioned people can learn more at your website. Uh, give us that website. Yeah, that is trentstags.com. Go there. You can see all of our issues and we've laid out a plan for each one of those with a short video. Okay, thanks for your time and we'll see how this unfolds. Mail-in ballots going out this week. Appreciate your time.